Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. Well, after the short break last week for basketball, we're back on stream. And we have that man here tonight, the Lord Blakey, one of the living legends in Calypso, Carlton Joseph. Thank Lord you, Blakey, sir. welcome to Calypso Showcase. Thank you very much, sir. Where did you get the name Lord Blakey? Well, I was a shoemaker. And Blakey, they have, have a tool in, sh in shoemaker they call a Blakey. So uh, I used to make my shoes on this, this Blakey thing. So that stick on to me. Lord Blakey. Yes, Blakey stick on to me. So when I get in Calypso, I only put add on the law to it. <laughs> At one time, people used to call you the warlord. What, what brought that on? No, it's <clears throat> uh, presently now I'm the warlord. No, I they say I's a miserable felon in Calypso, you know. I, I look for argument all the time. <laughs> so they call me the warlord in Calypso because as a Calypsoan, you know, you're looking for argument all the time. And what's the Lord Blakey, the yeah. warlord, doing <laughs> in the year 1992 as far as Calypso is concerned? Well, what I did, I only went to the Calypso tent. I went to all, everyone. Every one of the Calypso tent. I went and listened. What I like, uh, take in. I will talk a little bit later about your assessment of the Calypso season for 92 mm -hmm. and maybe <clears throat> what you have in store for 93. But we know there are a lot of fans out there who want to go down memory lane, especially some of the older viewers. And for some of the young ones, let me tell you, you're going to look at some vintage Calypso from a master at the art, the Lord Blakey, as we take this in. Calypso showcase journey to the Roosevelt Barber and Saloon on Duke Street between Charlotte and Henry Street to find the Lord Blakey, Carlton Joseph. Coming in the door, I saw such veterans as the Terror, Nap Hepburn, Pancho, Sputnik. And I understand a lot of Calypsonians frequent this joint. A very favorite barber and saloon of the Calypsonians. Blakey, a pleasure and a privilege to be chatting with you today. Thanks very much, sir. It's a pleasure to, to meet you the same way. You know, from since I was a kid, I, I, the, the, the name Lord Blakey means a lot to me in terms of the Calypso and the Calypso world and watching you work on a stage. Never believed that the day would come when I'd actually be able to interview you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Well, question number one, when did it all begin for you? It began in 1954 when I sang Steel Band Clash. An immortal hit. Tell us, what gave you the inspiration to write that Calypso? Well, I was a member of the same Tokyo Steel Band. At that time, they called it Destination Tokyo. And the clash took place in Park Street. That, that year, Destination Tokyo played sledgemen. I was one of the sledgemen. And invaders was coming up Park Street. And Tokyo was coming down. If you listen to the Calypso, you can see the same thing I'm saying in it. So I ain't shift no way. It was a bacchanal, 1950 carnival. Fight was so, with invaders and Tokyo. My friend run and left his hat When they hit him a baseball bat Never me again To jump in a steel pan in border still hey! da, 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 da. Invaders beating sweet, uh -huh. coming up Park Street, uh -huh. Tokyo, coming down beating very slow. And friends, when the two band clash, Mama, you, if you see cut lash, never me again to jump in a steel band in Borders Bay. And bottles had to come from one steel band to the next. So they keep, invaders keep throwing bottles in Tokyo. And Tokyo keep throwing back bottles 
in invaders and I ran so help me God I run smoking I run like hell and end up on a lady bed and they were get my head busting bottles start felting uh -huh. if you see sleds passing uh -huh. husband and wife look they start running for the life a Indian man selling bread shout out Lad, today you're dead, never me again to jump in a steel band in Borders Bay. thing get hot uh -huh. if you see men get caught uh -huh. Lord Blakey run in a house by a lady quite on top the lady bed the felt a bottle and bust me head never me again to jump in a steel burning burning for the spin Now that steel band clash actually took place four years before that in 1950. Why did you wait so long to put it together in song? Well, um, what happened? What made me get across to that? I got three years at Youth Training Center, which is YTC. Youth Training Center at Golden Grove. And when I reached there to, to do my, my time, I was relaxed. So, so I end up making it a little bit. I take it therefore you had a, a turbulent childhood. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, you made it all the way to the finals in the very first year of your Calypso career with that tune. That's right. Relive that night for us. Boy, it was something else. That night, well, that time, the, the, the Guardian used to run the competition at the Savannah and they used to have the audition in a place they call Guardian Sport Club. That is the same place on Rising Road. What do they call it now? I don't know what they call it, but the Guardian newspapers used to run that competition in the Savannah. And I went down there myself. I meet Christo there. This is Lord Melody. This is Christo. I read where you were the favorite to win that year, but Lord Melody with second spring won the competition. What happened when the results were announced? No harass to me. <laughs> it wasn't no harass to me. But I know I was doing the right thing. What happened to your Calypso career after that? Because I think 56, 57, and... 50 55 a song. A song named Lipstick Sakagiel. Mm -hmm. And 56, I didn't sing. 57, I didn't sing. But Melody get on the papers and say what I sang in 54 was a fluke. So I saw him, I came back in. 1958. 58. And sing too much more. And that is one of uh, the sweetest calypsos you've ever sung. I don't think we have any record of it. And I would like you to give me a little taste of too much smut. Every, every day, my neighbor complaining. But Sparrow and his smut, the calypso singing. It's a disgrace to hear Sparrow singing. And my brothers and sisters, them listening. My mother run and hold my sister by she throat. When she heard that singing John Float and the goat, only let she go and come inside the guild start to sing the family size. Sparrow alone is not to be blamed. Is the committee and judges give him his fame? Was Marty Jean and Dinah he sing when they crown him to need that calypso king? <laughs> a gem, a gem. Of course, a gem, a gem. That is 1958. Right. And 1959, back in the savannah again and ready for them. Tell us about 1959. I can't remember so much about 1959. I can't remember so much about it. But well, 1959 is the year you sang two tunes, Bring Back the Queen and um, the man, Manners Make It Man, not the clothes. Can you recall those two tunes? Yes, I could remember. Um, I could remember one of the two now. Craig. That, that is song with Craig Arm. Oh, Lord. 
you know these tunes them you know it, so long. we'll come back to it if you recall it but um that was it. those are the two tunes that you sang in that year that took you all the way to the finals right and you ran second to the mighty striker that's right that same year yes because striker run came king for both years for two years the first year they raised the money striker win the second year they raised the money again striker win again yeah, Striker had a hot tune in 59, Bandy Hula Hoop, and that was on, you know, everybody's lips. What do you think? You could remember? No, I can't remember the year following year. Um, I think it was um, a P&M song. Yeah. Um, right. Good, good. It's yeah? a P&M song. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what woman lost her man, she going to complain to Dr. William. Right. Even again. Don't blame the P&M. Don't blame the P&M. That's what it's all. That was the song. Yeah. And he went in both ears. Both ears, one behind the next. Well, I show the next tune that you sang in 1960, you will remember the Arabian festival. Yes, I could remember that. And people always wonder how you put those... Um, no calypso in the world, or no singer in the world could learn that, you know. Well, I want to hear you do it for me, because I wanted, always wanted to see you sing this calypso close-up. This guy is going to call myself at Mustafa. Went to a rap festival in Arabia, and this guy is going to call myself at Mustafa. Went to a rap festival in Arabia, for your better information, if you want to know, I was the Calypsonian they picked to go, but I couldn't speak the language, so I ain't rude. But alone on the way how to beg for food was give me some kit bila ham and michi. Horra for no hockey Santa Buri, Rakata after Hatan Mamaduki, the men you kill of Dulati. Nobody can sing that. I alone could sing that. Now, next, a second Calypso and could sing that like me. Because I, is, now, if, if I give a joke, I don't know what I'm saying, you know. But I just put words together in my way. So I practice that. So I know nobody can sing that like me. No, I, I understand that here too, that um, some people didn't want you to sing that in the final. They, you had a tune also, they, they dock me to sing that. But then um, the chairman at the CDC was Mr. Ronnie Williams. And he wanted me was to sing a song on this is Dr. William. And I end up singing that song. And from the time I start the song, I realized that the audience didn't want that. They wanted to hear me sing the Arabian. Because them and all could not understand what I saying. But I know why I know why I was saying. Because I talk in Arabian and it's only me alone know, know what I'm saying. Right. And when they come and ask me, you know what you're saying? I say no. But I know what I'm saying in the Calypso. Because I understand what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying in the Calypso. But put it to me and ask me about this word and that word and that word. I, uh, oh, you had a, a special way you used to put things together in a comical way that, and you would explain it in the fourth verse. Right. I remember the, the, um, the one about the Chinese in the accident. You could tell me a little bit about that. Yes. Um, the, I will sing a verse, a line for you so you will understand what I say. Is a tiny man truck and a Negro man make a collision. But the two truck squeeze a car which was driven by a woman. Well, friends, I love to bad until a go insane. When the magistrate called the Chinese man to explain, he said, My lolly, corny up, he lolly, corny tongue, he too lolly, pongy lady, lying for Ellie Potty, the magistrate. Mr. Scarfu, tell the Chinese, hush your tail. If you utter another word, young man, I send you straight to the jail. Well, it's back and I'll know, friends. I'm sorry, all you didn't dare. When you I say, hush, boss. To hear what the Chinese say, but the prosecutor self like if he went out the brain. The magistrate passed an order, but he asked the Chinese again. The Chinese say, "My lolly, corny up, he lolly, corny tongue, he too lolly, pongy lady, lying for anybody, but he lolly, jumps he behind and puts he lay he cut tongue." On my lolly, so please tell me. Who plati lolly molong? 
what the man is saying. He says, my lorry coming up. He lorry coming down. The, the two lorry, bouncy lady, right in front, everybody. But his lorry, jam she behind and punch the lady cap down. On his lorry, so please tell he who blasted lorry more wrong. Now there are two features that are characteristic of the Blakey. One is your laugh, which um, once we hear that laugh, we know it's Blakey going to sing. And the other is the stick or the straw in the hand. Now here, yeah, what happened? If I in the Calypso tent, if I sing in the Calypso tent, I use a switch, which is a, 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 um, a antenna from a car, shine sometimes. But if I have any way to go and sing, I, I, and I can't get no switch, I use a straw. Now this is to make a novel a short and my hand short, so this is an extra length to draw the audience to me. That they go understand what I am saying. <laughs> you understand that kind of way? So I use that extra thing. For that purpose? For that purpose. But then the laugh now I'm making fun all the time. <laughs> now 1962 was Blakey's year. Maria. Maria. Was <laughs> that my back? And uh, you know, hear what happened. During the year 1962, I was singing that song because that year Sparrow went away in the Calypso season. And he tell the management, which is Mr. Seal Taylor, that he's a deceased now, he did, that look, the only person who could fill this spot for me is Blakey. I was singing in the next tent. And they brought me across. And I end up singing that song. Maria. I was playing a boss, but look at me cross. Friends, this thing reached so far. Man, quiet in the south, I'm still in a doubt. I pick up with Maria. Introduce her to me, darling. That's Lord Blakey. Oh, what a lovely face. She put on the angel smile on me, and that was the case of me falling. Maria, girl, I love you so bad. Maria, if you leave me now, we'll be on. I don't know what makes me love so, but she catch me sweet. What but she gave me to rub, I eat. <laughs> What no. gave you the, the inspiration, the idea for, for to no. sing this song? Hear what happened? I I was on a waiting trial in in um, Golden Grove. Golden Grove. And then they bring me down here at Royal Jail. And I in a cell by myself. So I wanted something to do. So the only th I always make calypsos, you know, make tune and all of these things, so I do my own thing. I make all my calypsos. And uh, inspiration come to me that I like so much girl and things. <laughs> so that figure to me, but I have a tune for it. I have a tune and I have no words. So I end up making this tune. I don't know what to say, a boiling dung every day. She doing me what she like. I can't catch me breath, I frighten to death. You could ask me, neighbor Mike. It have a thing she does do, I can't tell it to you because plenty people gonna cry. And yet still it have some deceitful one in here will say that Lord Becky lie. Left me bowling, Maria. Yeah, I love you so bad. Maria, if you leave me, no, will be hard. She's somewhere. Hiding in the back, yeah, as I finish sing and get me money to take everything. 